They promised to stay behind police barricades, but an hour after the official start of their rally, a small group of Bursi protesters breached the razor wire and rushed for Independence Square. Thousands more followed. The police response was uncompromising. Soon the tear gas, chemically laced water cannon, and more close quarter tactics had forced almost all of the protesters back from the square. What followed was a period of relative calm. But when a group of protesters returned more than two hours later, there seemed little discipline in the police response. Here you can see one policeman aim a kick at an arrested protester before the camera is pushed away. Up the street, this man has already been beaten, but he gets one last slap for his trouble. You can see this protest is far from over. Police are still pretty aggressively dealing with a number of the protesters. This is two and a half hours after the initial burst through the barricades. Shortly afterwards, while trying to film another protester being held and kneed, we were attacked by police and our camera smashed to the ground. Bursi's organisers argue that the protest was necessary, saying a recent parliamentary report pledging electoral reform doesn't go far enough and won't be implemented in time for an election widely believed to be set for June. I'm not fighting for any political party, but I want um, all our views to be represented in an equal manner. And we want to see a clean election and not something that is going to be manipulated. And that's the reason why we're here. Bursi says the protesters who breached the barricades deserve to be taken to task by police, but the police did more than take them to task. Neither side will be able to claim much credit from Saturday's events. Harry Fawcett, Al Jazeera, Kuala Lumpur.